if you describe the conflict as a war or an invasion, rather than the Kremlin's preferred term of special military operation, then you will be deemed to have broken the, the law. We're, we're, seeing, we're, seeing, we're seeing tech companies now, like Facebook. We're seeing uh, international media, like, uh, like BBC, like CNN, like uh, France 24, limiting their operations in the country. What does this mean for Russians trying to access the truth? Well, um, the social media has not been completely closed down in, in Russia. It, it seems that... Um, it, it, it seems that the Kremlin doesn't feel that it can it, it can stop all information from circulating, and so, uh, I, I, for example, um, Telegram, the social messenger, is 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 very popular in Russia and still being widely used. Um, I, I also understand um, from Russian colleagues that that Russians who have a VPN are are, are able to use that to access uh, information. Of fa fairly readily, so I I, I think it, it it will be it it will be a challenge for the Kremlin to entirely close down the flow of uh, the flow of information, however hard they're trying. We, 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 Vladimir Putin, Putin in, power in power for two decades now. We've seen him clamp down on dissent various times, also on independent Russian media, but to this scale. Have you seen the Russian president take such action before? Well, no. Clearly, this is the, 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 this is the furthest that, that he's gone. I mean, there's there's no longer any pretense to anything other than that Russia is a police state. Uh, the, the people people that people are not just arrested for going out to protest. I, there have even been reports of uh, uh, of people knock, knocking on the doors of. Uh, um, uh, knocking on people's doors and saying, "We hear you're an opponent of the government," and uh, you, 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 you'll have seen those heartbreaking pictures of uh, children who were arrested because they had um, because they had uh, no to war placards and, and sat in prison cells. So, uh, so no, this is um, um, th th there's. I suppose uh, uh, um, earlier in the Putin period, there was just this. There was this pretense that um, Russia was a functioning democracy. You know, we ca carried on ho holding interval. Well, they still do carry on holding elections, even though we know that their the results are completely unbelievable and falsified. But uh, I think I think clearly in 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 the recent period putin has has passed some kind of a some kind of a point of no return in respect of uh, the way that he treats his own population and 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 it's certainly going to be um a, a key i suppose in the next uh, in the next few weeks to see how as as the effect of the clampdown and as the effect of the uh, of of the growing economic crisis uh, deepens how, how the Russian people will react to that. Yeah, it's interesting. In your response, you said the term uh, police state, and there have been reports of a small but growing stream of people leaving Russia amid rumors that Putin might introduce some form of martial law to deal with demonstrations against the invasion. Uh, does that seem likely to you now? Well, uh, it, it is the logical conclusion of, um, uh, 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 of the road that he's, uh, that he's taken the, the country on, I think, um, uh, especially, especially in a situation where the Russian army is doing a great deal less well the, 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 than he had hoped. Um, and I, I, I think as, as um, news of the, of, the, of the military problems starts um, starts being more widely known in, in, in Russia, then he, he really might find that he needs to clamp down, uh, clamp down harder. So yes, in my view, martial law is absolutely a possibility. And Professor, it seems unlikely that sanctions against wealthy Russian oligarchs could cause them to turn on President Putin. What would it take, though, for that to happen, for his inner circle to turn on him? Well, I, I, I think it's important to remember that there are many oligarchs who are part of the inner circle. Um, the, the inner circle is very much um, a group of um, the, the Russians call them the Siloviki, the uh, the security services, the uh, the, um, the the top of the various kind of uh, the FSB, um, the Foreign Intelligence Service. Um, the, these these are the these are the people who are. 
um, absolutely closest to Putin. Uh, and, and it's very hard to envisage a, a scenario where senior security service officers would choose to uh, um, w w w would choose to turn on Putin. Their fates are too bound together. I mean, they they share the same worldviews. They they uh, uh, share the same bank accounts. They they they've committed the same crimes. They they, uh, they they've they've all equally got blood on their hands. I think those people sink or swim together. I mean, it's more plausible to look for opposition within the uh, military rather than the uh, rather than the security services, particularly if this is this does turn into um, an ongoing. Um, uh, um, ongoing military problem for uh, for uh, Russia, but on, on the other hand, uh, it, it, it's very difficult to imagine any senior figure in the in the Kremlin who has the will to try to uh, to try to commit a palace coup or something like that. One might almost say that those those who want to can't, and and those who would have the opportunity won't. Indeed. All right. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, Professor Matthew Wyman from Keele University. Thank you.